Our boats come in. Cousin Mel says we won the lottery! Jake, after seeing how horribly, brutally murdered Grandma is, he tries to go back outside and try and save her. But the family soon take Jake's stupid ass back inside. And also, Grandpa just watches everything that just happened. Like, he didn't even do anything. You fucking saw everything. You were downstairs. Why didn't you save your fucking wife, you asshole? Did you just wait for Grandma to kick so you can be with your young 20-year-old cosplay lover? After that, they just wait in the morning. I mean, her body could still be there. For crying out loud, she's still in the front fucking yard. It's not like she traveled like 50 miles or anything. Y'all are just lazy. That's what it is. The police soon arrive in the morning as Jake soon tells them what happened. I saw Grandma get run over by a reindeer. Sorry, son. Impossible. Right here in the manual. Wait, out of any rules in a police manual, one of them is Santa is not real. Then wait, what the fuck happens if Santa does exist? Does that mean the police are fucking in trouble or something? Soon after that, they try to look for Grandma, but sadly, they found nothing but a bunch of clues. We then see Cousin Mel pick up a piece of paper and then hide it. Oh, gee, I wonder if that letter is a clue to trying to find Grandma. Oh, gee, I fucking wonder. Soon, Austin Bucks comes back and then turns to Cousin Mel, and she asks, Are you still interested in buying this establishment? But sadly, Grandpa has to sign some sort of agreement clause in order for Cousin Mel to sell this place. Soon, Cousin Mel takes Grandpa to her favorite restaurant, and then we get some more wacky Grandpa hijinks! Grandma? Spending Christmas with the superstars. Since That's our grandpa! We soon transition back into the store as Cousin Mel then walks in and says that they. Yeah, that. But soon Cousin Mel basically says, Oh, wait, never mind. I'm just selling the place for a bunch of money. It's a prank, bro. I've got to stop her. Yeah! We gotta stop Cousin Mel from actually making us financially stable! Soon Jake wastes animation money by following Pursuit and trying to stop Cousin Mel from selling the shop. But sadly, he makes it a little bit too late. And after that, we get this clip. Cousin Mel's attorney. I am Slime. You said it, not me. Another problem I have with this movie is the fact that there's too many fucking awkward pauses. Seriously, I'm pretty sure if you have a drinking game with all of your buddies, you would probably die of alcohol poisoning. Austin Buck soon tells Jake if he really thinks Santa's real, then he should go and find him and ask where Grandma is. Not gonna lie, for a businessman, Bucks is actually pretty cool. If only real rich people were like that, then they would actually be helpful in society and not just keep making money illegally. So Jake just stands there all triumphant and, like, is... Is he okay? Did he have another stroke? Jake? Jake, are you are you okay? Soon after Jake's possible trip to the hospital, he goes back into his room and then tries to find Santa Claus via email. Oh, okay, uh, a few things. First off, how the hell do you have his fucking email address? I mean, how do you know it's not just some creepy pedo trying to get nudes from kids? Secondly, wouldn't you be, like, super pissed off at this point? I mean, Santa did, like, run over and possibly kidnap your fucking grandmother? I mean, shouldn't you be a little more pissed off and call Santa, like, a fat ass or something for kidnapping your grandma? Also, Santa at santasreal.com. Whew, I'm getting even more pedophile vibes right now. Oh, oh, oh and that, that elf is not helping one bit. Mmm. We then see Santa's top elf, Quincy, as he's been delivered the message and then gives it right to Santa Claus. Then we see that Granny's actually okay, but sadly, she suffered a bit of amnesia. Santa then tells Quincy to go and deliver a message immediately, but then gets a better idea. Soon, Doofus rightfully barks at an attempted rape, but Jake lets the elf in anyway. They then fly to the North Pole, and then Jake is soon introduced to Santa Claus. Then after all of that, we find that the creepy elf also has a creepy frown as well as a creepy smile. That is most definitely going into my nightmares. Jake then tries to explain the situation at hand, but Grandma, as usual, still has absolutely no fucking idea what's going on. I mean, I, I think most of us are at that point. But agrees to go with Jake anyway. After seeing Grandma come back, Slime and Cousin Mel have a plan to get rid of her once again. They get rid of the reindeer and then kidnap Grandma as Santa soon makes his presence heard. Explaining how he's the real Santa by knowing what Austin Bucks' favorite toy was, as well as explain exactly what happened during the incident of that night. So after that, it looks like everything's back to normal and we can fucking go home and I can just- Grandma! We couldn't find her anywhere! She's missing again! No! No! God damn it! Being said, as Grandma's missing once again, Cousin Mel now sues Santa for everything he's got for Grandma's abduction. What does that leave us with our heroes? What are we going to do next? How are we going to transition into- <laughs>
<laughs> we then skip to the court as some lawyer person is talking to the jury, and we just get a bunch of characters that are angry, sad, pissed off, and blind. I'm, I'm sad because I, I can't, can't see anything. anything. We soon transition to Cousin Mel's cabin as Quincy and Jake try and get Grandma out of the- They soon get Grandma out of the cabin, trying to find a way to make sure that she remembers everything. As soon as they fed her the fruitcake, she then remembers everything that happened, and I'm not gonna lie when I say that's the best way to insult your grandma's cooking, you little shit. Oh yeah! Stop fucking saying that! It's like one of those long pauses! Take a shot every time he says that shit! Then they make it to the courthouse, and the rest of the special just turns into Phoenix Rider. Dungan Ranpa, depending on what game you guys play. And then we see all the witnesses and the proof that Sin is innocent, and that we know that Cousin Mel is- EVIL! Yes, thank- thank you. Thank you, Mermaid Man. They then arrest Cousin Mel for fucking up Christmas. Soon everything's all good. Grandma partners up with Austin Bucks, Jake gains the family's respect, and Grandma's back in town. Oh, and Grandma also gets hit by a reindeer one more time, and is probably dead now. The end. Everything about this fucking special is just cancer to me. It's just like Selena Gomez if Selena Gomez was a fucking Christmas special. Every single thing about this special just does not try at all. From the animation, to the voice acting, to the characters being so too goddamn dimensional. And you know what? There are some people that like it. There are some people that are like, this special's pretty funny. I, I like it when the granddad just walks into the room and says, All right! I like the awkward pauses and the fact that Jake just says the word, Oh yeah, so many times you would think that he's the Jeff Hardy theme song. Everything about this special is just so awkward and so bad. I'm sure it's just like the room of Christmas movies. It's just... I don't know, man. It insults me. and I can't just look at this. In a world where there are so many better animators out there that don't even have a fucking studio, they're still better at animating than these fucking Canadian hacks. But I mean, I guess that's what it's all about. Awkward animation, the low budget, all of the voice cast, just not giving a damn. Everything about this special is just garbage. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's fucking duty garbage, and I just don't like it. If you really want a good Christmas special, then just go and look for something that's not this. Please. These guys gave me money, so you know what that means. Free blowjobs for everybody! Well, only these guys, since they paid. But doesn't that make it not free, though? Shut up! Thank you guys so very much for watching this second part of the video. If you want to see the first part, go up here and then click on that vid where I'm just looking like a very, very angry Leisure Suit Larry. No, seriously, MoFat from Brooklyn did an amazing job with thumbnails. Go check him out as well in his Tumblr. Uh, and down here, you can watch Bitching is Magic Sarah, because, you know, that was a thing. Lastly, I just want to say, this is going to be the last video for 2015. I love every single one of you guys so very, very much. Thank you all for the amazing support. And more importantly, stay tuned for 2016, because uh, a lot of shit's going to go down on that year definitely can't say what but it's gonna be big okay. thank you guys so very very much i love you all just have a good new year's eve and go and fuck prostitutes but don't do that because your, your pp will get all all dirty and, and you'll get cancer or, or sexual transmitted diseases i don't want that to happen to you okay bye